Today I'm officially joining the Animal Artists Collective theme Temperate Forests as a guest member. Let's go! Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm so happy to share this video with you today. I've been invited to join the Animal Artist Collective for their theme this month. It's a group of artists that create videos on the same theme every other month. They all sell their artwork created for these videos and at least 50% of the profit is donated to animal conservation. In case you decide to buy the original piece that I created for this video, I will be donating those 50% to the Worldwide Fund. For more information on the Animal Artists Collective, check out my description box. Don't forget to watch the other artists' videos as well, because they're all extremely skilled and creative. They all have very distinct styles and it's just amazing to see what everyone comes up with on the same theme. This year the AAC decided to go with different habitats that animals live in as their themes. And today it is temperate forests. That's an amazing habitat since there are a lot of animals to choose from. And I think that I chose by far the cutest one. <laughs> Maybe that's because I have a sweet spot for small rodents. I've always had bunnies, gerbils or hamsters as pets and always loved cute and fluffy creatures. <laughs> so I ended up choosing the hazel dormouse as my animal. The hazel dormouse isn't really well known like other animals but there are actually quite a few of them. They aren't endangered, but unfortunately their numbers decreased over the last few years. The hazel dormouse is nocturnal, as many other small animals in the wild. As typical for those, they have big eyes and highly functioning ears. What might sound surprising is that they aren't actually mice. They got their name from their similar appearance, but they actually more related to squirrels than mice. Hazel dormice have been called good spirits of the forest because they only appear under the right circumstances. That means that they are a good indicator whether the forest is healthy or not. Besides forests, they also live in dense bushes and hedges. They live all over Europe, from South England to France, and all over Italy and even to the Ukraine. They are tiny, with a maximum height of about 9 cm. Right before winter, they literally double their weight because they sleep for 7 months. And in that time, they actually cuddle with others sometimes. They aren't as territorial as other species and as long as there is enough food and space, they get along quite well with others. Because they sleep so long, they are also called sleeping mice, which I think is extremely cute. But they don't actually sleep all that in all that time, they just rest. Their body temperature goes down a lot and sometimes they even stop breathing for a few minutes. <laughs> Every three to four weeks they wake up completely and move around a bit for their metabolism. And in that time they actually lose the majority of the weight they put on in the warmer months. Some more facts. They can live up to six years, which is very long if you consider their body size. They communicate through ultrasound similarly to bats. And they eat just about anything that they can find. Nuts, berries, leaves, bark, pollen, seeds, even insects and spiders sometimes. In one night they travel 50 to 300 meters, meters which is quite a long distance for those tiny animals. What's extremely interesting is that when a predator finds the nest where a mother with her babies is sleeping, the mother will run away to serve as a bait. 
In case she survives, she will later come back to the nest and carry every single baby to another nest to make sure that they are safe. That's why they build more than one nest to stay in. Like I said earlier, their numbers decreased a lot over the last years. So what can we actually do about that? In case you live in a country where hazel dormice live, you could do three things to help them out a little bit if you have a garden. First is to build a wooden box for them to sleep in with a hole of 19 to 21 centimeters on the back side. In case they actually decide to sleep in there, do not disturb them. Second, you can leave heaps of leaves in your garden somewhere. And third, if you have bushes or hatches, do not clean them from any branches or leaves. Hazel dormice prefer a messy living space. If you're having a bad day, I highly encourage you to Google the hazel dormouse. Those are the cutest things that I've ever seen besides quokkas. I really hope that I did them justice with that piece. The reference photo for it was taken by the photographer Dieter Balk. In case you speak German or just want to look at his pictures, I will link his website down below. Thank you again for providing this amazing reference picture. So let's talk a little bit about my painting process and the supplies that I used for this piece. Since I recently discovered gouache, I felt like doing something with it. But I really wanted a loose watercolor background, so I thought, why not mix those two mediums? They give you a very different style, <laughs> and so I wasn't too sure how this piece would turn out. But I gave it a try, and I'm really glad that I did. In case you're wondering where the differences of those mediums are, check out my gouache versus watercolor video. But you can kind of see it a little bit on this picture as well. I wanted the background to have this painterly look and to do a lot of glazing, which is basically layering transparent colors on top of each other and mixing those tones. So I used watercolors here. And I wanted the fur to look super fluffy and soft, so I did that with gouache. I have to say that I really love how this piece turned out. I love the colors and how cute that animal is. I might actually paint it again sometime since I kind of fell in love with it. I'd actually love to have one as a pet. But I know that they probably make worse animals than my hamster, who is an absolute escape artist. I can't imagine losing a tiny hazel dormouse in our apartment. And it would be miserable, so that dream will probably never come true. But I learned so much about them and I gained a lot of appreciation for them. I actually didn't know that they existed until I started to do research for this video. So maybe you got to know a new species here today as well. There are so many incredible animals out there. Let's work together trying to protect our beautiful planet and helping animals. We're not the only ones who live here and I think we shouldn't act like the earth is just here for us. There are so many species that we have yet to discover and learn about. Like I said in the beginning, 50% of the profit made from selling this piece will go to the Worldwide Fund. I chose them because they have a program that protects our forests and that's the best thing we can do for these little creatures. I will link all the info for this and the Animal Artists Collective down below. Check out the other artists as well and show them some love. I'm glad that this collective exists and that it has such a good cause. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you on Saturday for my next video. Goodbye!